cloning a genomic DNA. And here we will focus that uh, how we can produce uh, genomic libraries by using or by cloning DNA in bacteriophage lambda. Suppose that we are going to uh, clone a particular gene from human genome. And human genome, it is comparatively uh, larger in size as compared to other organisms. And if we want to screen our uh, clone of interest or a particular gene from a complex source of human genome, then we have to digest human genome into discrete fragments. For example, if we will use restriction enzyme like ECOR1, then it will produce DNA fragments having approximately 4 kilobase uh, fragments of DNA. And if 4 kilobase DNA fragments, they are ligated with bacteriophage lambda, then how many clones are uh, required to generate human genomic library? So approximately uh, 7 into 10 raised to the power 5 recombinant clones are required and that are huge in number. And to screen this human library, it is a laborious process. Uh, first, we can compare the genome of different organisms. We can start from Escherichia coli, that its genome size is 4 into 10 raised to the power 3 kilobase, and mainly it represents haploid genome where applicable. And yeast is 1.3. 5 into 10 to the power 4, and then another model plant system, Arabidopsis, tobacco, wheat, zea maize, drosophila, mouse, and finally human. Here, it is having genome size of 2.8 into 10 to the power 6, and approximately we require around 7 into 10 to the power 5 DNA fragments to produce suitable human genome library that will represent the whole genomic setup of the human genome. If we will attempt above strategy to screen a particular uh, gene from the complex human genome, then we can face different problems. The first problem is that if the gene it is of larger size, then it may contain more than uh, one target sites of a particular restriction endonucleases uh, like ECOR1. So, uh, in this case, our gene of interest may be obtained in, in two or more fragments that are not suitable uh, for cloning. And sometime even, the size of the gene, it is very small, like 4 kilobase pair. If we will attempt to clone it, uh, then we will have, uh, you can say that, a huge number of uh, recombinant uh, clones that are very difficult uh, to screen. On the other hand, if the gene of interest it is very large, then sometimes it is very difficult to clone uh, into a suitable vector. This problem can be overcome uh, by using suitable cloning vector like the bacteriophage lambda as I told you earlier that it can accumulate uh, around about 20 kilobase uh, DNA fragment and here we can uh, digest the fragment at the source DNA randomly so that we have random DNA fragments that represents the whole DNA genome of human or from any other source and then it is ligated with bacteriophage lambda that can accumulate around 20 kilobase pair and then it can be uh, screened further. Now the question is that how we can generate DNA fragments of appropriate sizes? Here basically two strategies they are mainly used. The first one may be that mechanical shearing where we can disintegrate DNA mechanically by using suitable devices. But here, although the random DNA fragments they are produced, but their size can be 
controlled but they are cloning with suitable vector it will require uh, some modifications like linker molecules uh, we may have to use to clone in into a suitable cloning vector the most appropriate uh, suitable technique is that uh, we should use uh, restriction endonuclease to generate uh, discrete DNA fragments so another strategy that was devised by many uh, atus and co-worker uh, to generate uh, uh, DNA library uh, we are going to discuss here so in this strategy that was devised by miniatus and co-worker uh, the genomic DNA or the source DNA uh, it was digested with uh, two restriction enzymes like he3 or uh, ALU1 these restriction enzymes they can generate the blunt ends and here if we will allow complete digestion the DNA fragments will be produced uh, that that is having very small length like one kilo base and here we have to allow partial digestion partial digestion means that low incubation time uh, so that the enzyme will get less time to cleave the target DNA so that we will get larger DNA fragments that may be around 20 kilo base and then this uh, target DNA it is uh, treated with uh, eco R1 methylase so that internal E. coli sites uh, it will be uh, methylated and the E. coli further will not be able to digest it after methylation the target DNA that is around now fragment is around 20 kilo base pair it is ligated with linker molecules that contain E. coli R1 site it is digested with E. coli R1 so the sticky end will be produced and then uh, it is ligated with bacteriophage lambda DNA that has been cut with E. coli R1 so they are ligated and then they are packaged uh, uh, they are packaged into the phage head and then they are used for uh, infection to uh, E. coli that is the host organism so this is the strategy that was devised by maniatus and co-worker to produce a representative genomic libraries the first step is that the source DNA that is eukaryotic origin high molecular weight it can be digested with two restriction enzyme he 3 and ALU1 so partial digestion is allowed so that uh, the DNA fragments that are generated they should be around 20 kilo base pair that are suitable to clone with bacteriophage lambda after fragmentation it is treated with eco R1 methylase so internal eco R1 sites they will be methylated and eco R1 it is no longer digested because of the methylation and then the linker molecules they are joined that contain one target site for eco R1 on right R and left side then it is treated with eco R1 so that sticky ends they are produced in this DNA molecule and then on the other hand lambda replacement vector like the chiron 4a it is used as a cloning vector and it is digested with eco r1 so that the sticky ends they are produced and internal fragments they are discarded and then this cohesive end of the bacteriophage lambda they are ligated with the source dna and in the next step the source dna it is now ligated within the cos site of bacteriophage lambda and then it is used for in vitro packaging no phage particles are produced that can be used to infect uh, E. coli or other suitable host organisms